The 1990s brought the world some truly incredible TV, but for every network sitcom that played it safe, there were shows with premises that were, frankly, bonkers. From the alien abduction capers to the sci-fi cowboy romps, these are the 90s shows with the weirdest setups around. Twin Peaks made its debut on April 8, 1990, and forever changed the way television shows were made, received, and discussed. Created by Mark Frost and David Lynch, the series focuses on the killing of popular high school student Laura Palmer in the fictional town of Twin Peaks, Washington. The ensuing investigation, led by FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, brings forth a seemingly endless number of suspects from the town's pool of eccentrics, and is marked by supernatural occurrences, doppelgangers housed in extra-dimensional realms, and otherworldly killers. The show blends elements from nearly every genre, balancing its serious subject matter with a tone that's both irreverent and melodramatic. Who's the lady with the log? I would call it a log lady. Lynch's cinematic vision came from so far out of left field that the complete absurdity of it made viewers head spin. The twists and turns of the show's narrative are dizzying. Teenage prostitution, riddle-spouting giants, drug trafficking, and the afterlife itself are all part of the Twin Peaks story. No wonder we're still discussing it, more than 30 years after its debut. From the moment The X-Files premiered in 1993, it was obvious viewers were going to be in for one hell of a ride. Its pilot episode centers on a series of teenage deaths that FBI Special Agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully are tasked with solving. Mulder is convinced that they're the result of alien abductions, while Scully believes there's a rational explanation to be found. Do you believe in the existence of extraterrestrials? Logically, I would have to say no. The truth is that there's more to it than either agent realizes, which sends the pair on an 11-season-long quest to uncover the government's darkest secrets. Along with its heavy dose of UFO lore, The X-Files explores everything from occult mystery to cyberpunk sci-fi. Highlights of the series include Season 2's Humbug, which tells the story of a killer parasitic twin let loose among a community of circus performers, Season 3's Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose, about a life insurance salesman who can see how people will die and who gives Scully a couple of very important predictions, and Season 4's Home, arguably the show's most controversial episode, which follows the Peacocks, a very Texas Chainsaw-esque family living and breeding in a small Pennsylvania town. It's wild, it's weird, and it's why we still love The X-Files today. In the spring of 1989, television audiences were blessed with the glorious seaside camp fest that was Baywatch. Starring David Hasselhoff as Mitch Buchanan, the series follows a team of LA County lifeguards as they dive headfirst into hard-hitting stories, like stomping an amateur fire breather from burning down lifeguard towers and inadvertently falling in love with killers. The show wound up being so successful that it got a spin-off in 1995, Baywatch Nights, which takes the ridiculous premise of crime-fighting lifeguards to a whole new level. Baywatch Nights follows Garner Ellerby, a police sergeant turned private detective who starts a business with Mitch and Detective Ryan McBride. The first season is pretty standard stuff, but when ratings dipped, the show took a sharp left into X-Files territory, replacing Garner with paranormal expert Diamant Teague in season two. From there, fast food drug deals and mob kidnappings were replaced with Haitian voodoo cults, vampires, and gelatinous sea monsters. The Supernatural update did little to solve the show's viewership issues, though, and it was canceled after its sophomore season. Photojournalist Thomas Vail's life is turned upside down when, in the middle of a romantic dinner with his wife, he returns from the bathroom to find that his entire existence has been erased. His wife is gone, his best friend is dead, and there's someone else living in his house. Nowhere Man follows Thomas's quest to uncover the truth of his stolen identity, which traces back to a secret government organization and a photograph he took of four U.S. soldiers being hanged in South America. Everything they give you, they can take back. Everything you thought you had, you don't. Absolute zero, gentle Jack, bottom line. It ran for one season before it was canceled. The series plays out much like 1963's The Fugitive, in that Thomas travels from city to city in search for clues about the organization, picking up odd jobs to fly under the radar while he gets closer to the truth. Along the way, he comes into contact with a string of strange characters, including a 10-year-old blind psychic, a UFO enthusiast, and several actors hired by the organization to bring Thomas in. Ultimately, the truth behind the organization and Thomas's lost identity leaves him with more questions than answers. 
But with the show's early cancellation, audiences were never given the opportunity to delve any deeper. Mantis's pilot episode is vastly different from the series that follows. It begins as the story of one of the first black superheroes on TV, Dr. Miles Hawkins, a biophysicist who becomes paralyzed after being shot by a police sniper during a riot. He develops an exoskeleton that offers him mobility and more, the Mechanically Augmented Neurotransmitter Interactive System, and, rather reluctantly, sets out on a mission to fight crime and corruption. Before the series went to air, however, serious changes were made, including the replacement of its diverse cast with one that featured only two people of color outside the show's main character. Plot points that focused heavily on racial issues were changed in favor of fantasy elements like parallel universes and time travel. The series finale involves an invisible dinosaur frozen in a glacier. Shoot it, shoot! This retooled concept was met with criticism, although network execs were quick to cite creative reasons for the changes, with Bob Greenblatt, senior vice president of drama series development at Fox, telling the Los Angeles Times, I thought the pilot was too grim and too realistic. We didn't want to do episodes about the human condition every week. So instead, audiences got genetically altered jellyfish people. The 1978 cult classic Attack of the Killer Tomatoes has, undoubtedly, one of the most ridiculous premises in cinematic history. Giant, man-eating tomatoes descend upon the country, throwing it into chaos. The only hope for humanity lies with a group of ragtag heroes led by a man named Mason Dixon that includes a disguise expert who attempts to infiltrate the tomatoes by dressing as one of them. Say, will somebody please pass the ketchup? Victory comes from a ballad called Puberty Love. It'd be difficult to build upon that premise any further, but between 1990 and 1991, Fox Kids did exactly that with Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the animated series no one saw coming. Five years after the Great Tomato War, Dr. Putrid T. Gangrene has continued his tomato experiments, which now include tomato variants like Tara, a tomato-turned-human, and her dog, F.T., a fuzzy tomato that barks. Tara befriends Chad, our 10-year-old hero, and gets a job working at Chad's uncle's shop, Tomatoless Pizza Parlor. Together, the trio attempt to stop Gang Green from taking over the world, who then work alongside him to defeat a group of twice-mutated tomatoes in revolt. It's just as weird as it sounds, but still not the weirdest thing that 90s kids were exposed to. Executively produced by Sam Raimi, American Gothic is a horror drama that ran on CBS for one season between 1995 and 1996. It tells the story of Caleb Temple, a young boy in the fictional town of Trinity, South Carolina, who comes to find out he's the son of the literal devil, who rules over the town by posing as its friendly sheriff, Lucas Buck. After Lucas kills Caleb's entire family, he sets about grooming him to take over the throne. There's only two roads in this world, and if you're listening to anyone but me, you're on the wrong one. But he stopped with the help of Trinity's newest transplant, Dr. Matt Crower, Caleb's cousin Gail, and the ghost of his sister, Merlin. That plot is strange enough as it is, but CBS pulled a firefly with the series and aired the season out of order, cutting four episodes completely from its original run. As a result, some key moments wound up being omitted from the story, including the one in which Gail uncovers the truth behind her parents' mysterious deaths, and another in which Lucas enlists the help of the Boston Strangler's ghost to deal with Merlin. On the planet Luminaire, the forces of good and evil fight for control of the powerful light star crystal. On one side is Baron Dark, whose success in capturing one half of the crystal has turned him into a living skeleton with the ability to change others into skeletons for his army. On the other side is Price Light Star and his family, who've managed to hold on to the other half of the light star crystal, which has imbued each of them with fantastic and decidedly less skeletonly powers. I have the power to terrify small children and stray dogs. Skeleton Warriors ran for only 13 episodes on CBS between 1994 and 1995. Things change on a dime in Luminaire. One week, Baron Dark would have the upper hand, then the next week, it would belong to Prince Lightstar. The show ends with Baron Dark's defeat and the destruction of the Lightstar Crystal entirely. While the story never evolves beyond the power struggle at its core, it did spawn its very own toy line, a Marvel comic series, and a video game proving that it didn't take much to keep 90s kids entertained, given a cool enough aesthetic. Skeleton Warriors exists today as an artifact from a bizarre time in animation. Part misty fantasy, part steely sci-fi, part death metal t-shirt.
The 90s had a real fascination with the idea of virtual reality. Films like 1992's The Lawnmower Man, 1995's Johnny Mnemonic, and 1999's The Thirteenth Floor all explore the virtual realm, complete with cutting-edge computer graphics straight out of Tomb Raider. Now, these kinds of sequences look pretty laughable, but in 1995, they were extremely cool. VR5 is the embodiment of that trend, from its dramatic shots of people typing to its cyberpunk visors. The show follows Sydney Bloom, a line worker for a telephone company who dabbles in virtual reality in her off time, when she accidentally discovers that she has the ability to tap into others' subconscious through her own VR world, Sydney becomes the target of the committee, a secret organization that may have actually been behind her family's death years prior. Welcome to the game, Sydney Bloom. VR5 didn't last long, only 13 episodes total, with three of them not airing at all during the show's run on Fox. But in those 13 episodes, audiences were treated to implanted memories, mirror worlds, and a whole lot of bad CG. Wild West Cowboys of Mumesa ran on ABC for two seasons between 1992 and 1993. Like most animated kids' shows at the time, the series' premise is completely bonkers. When a mysterious comet hits the Southwest sometime during the 19th century, it forms a mesa high in the clouds where its inhabitants become calmatized, mutating into a race of cow people whose way of life is strikingly similar to the regular human cowboys that exist below. Keeping peace in this bovine territory are the Code of the West Boys, a group of lawmen led by Marshall Moo Montana that includes the Dakota Dude and the Colorado Kid. The cowboys fight back against a series of villains, led by Mayor Oscar Bolany and Sheriff Terror Bull. Drop him! Huh? <gasps> the Masked Bull! Yeah. For the most part, the cowboys deal with pretty standard Wild West fare. Cattle drives, oil strikes, and masked robberies. But the show occasionally delved into even weirder territory. The 90s truly were a wonderful time to be alive even if you were a cow. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite 90s stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.